I'd like to read the scripture first. Okay. From the scripture. Alright. Today's scripture reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6 to 19. Of course, there is a great gain in godliness combined with contentment. But we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with this. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Next page. Please. But as for you, men of God, shun all this, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who is in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made a good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, it is he only alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. There are two the good, to be rich in good work, generous and ready to share. They're storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation of the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. This is the word of God for the people of God. All people say, thanks be to God. All right. It is great to be here with you this morning to share this gospel. Share this message. What a great church you are. Am I right? Yes. What a great leadership you have. What a great ministry you have done. I'm thrilled to work with you more in the future to come. And thank you, Pastor Richard, for your generous invitation. Thank you all for your presence this morning. That is great. Dear so gracious God, thank you for your presence in this moment. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. Two weeks ago, I was a little late, but I was sitting in the back row. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and watch me with you as a new visitor. And several of you are actually asking me, are you a new visitor? <laughs> wow. Very impressive because they recognize me immediately as a new one. And what a welcome church. And I said, yes, I will. They said, yes, come back again. We'd love to have you. So today, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I felt welcome. What? I 
felt, this could be my church. I felt your love for God and others and even your superintendent. So I'm not a stranger anymore. Am I right? I'm not a stranger anymore. I felt your passion and compassion in Christ and your commitment for Christ to the world. So I am here to encourage you to continue to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. So thank you for your good work. Thank you for your extraordinary outreach and ministry. Thank you. As Paul said in today's scripture, we all have to find a good fight of the faith and take hold of the eternal life. Can I get an amen? Amen. We have to fight a good fight of the faith and take hold of the eternal life. But we are not reaching the finish line of the good fight of the faith yet. I know some of us may be just close to that line, but many of us are still are struggling with our daily stuff. Routine works and businesses, the children's stuff, complicated relationships, and personalities, finance, politics, or even church stuff. Sometimes, or many times, our faith is challenged by those many things in our life that we couldn't simply get around with them. Life is tough, full of dilemmas, full of contradictions, full of uncertainties, full of doubt and self-doubt. How can you keep the faith? How can you find the good fight of the faith? Take hold of the internal life. How can you? Are you tough? Are you good at fighting? Come on, come on. This is not a good question that the pastor asked. Uh, <laughs> are you good at fighting? Anyway. Although sometimes I feel like I'm walking in the church as an arena. Not a sanctuary or holy place, but it is not about all good or you know, the church. But when you find a good fight of faith, you have to have a good strategy to win. You all like to win, right? You have to have a good strategy. So today, what Paul teaches us is two things. First, is know yourself and know God and know your enemy. Are you with me? Yeah. Second, and don't give up. Don't give up on fighting. Don't turn away from challenges. Endure today's challenges, adapt them as a new living condition and stay focused on the mission while you are here until you win. All right? You with me, right? Okay. How many of you practice martial arts? Such as Taekwondo or Garade? Wow. Several of them. Very impressive. Yes. A little one too. Yes. 25 years ago, when I was in military, Korean Army, I got my first degree black belt in Taekwondo. During the test, I had to pass four tests. First one is breaking a red brick and pattern and kicking and the fourth one is sparring. A lot of people fail to pass the sparring test because they had to kick their opponent's body, either waist or face. Can you do that? <laughs> the number one strategy to win in a sparring test is to keep an eye on the opponent from the beginning to the end during the fight. Then you can feel his or her body movement and you can anticipate what is their next movement. And you can defend any attack and you can win any time. You never fail 99%. How about that? Do you know the number one military tactic to win a war? 
if you know yourself, at the same time, you're ending well, you will win every single war. Because if you can come up with a good strategy based on the well thought out knowledge and information about your enemy. And if you know yourself and know others, you will win the thing. How simple it is. For our spiritual life, for our spiritual welfare, if you know yourself, know God, know what is the root of all kinds of evil and injustice. Spiritual enemy I'm talking about. You will never fail. As God never fails. You will even win the eternal life at the end of your journey. Can I get an amen? amen? You remember what Paul clearly said. Those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires. They plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many things. He is preaching today. Our number one enemy, which is not a terrorist or Russian spy, nor Democrat, nor Republicans, nor Hawkeyes or Cyclones. <laughs> they are not our enemies. The enemy that might ruin our spiritual life, our whole bank is money. People want to be rich, just like you and I do. Although I may not be able to reach that goal, as you know, Pastor is not rich. <laughs> we all want to be content with what we have. We obviously are so bogged down into what we have, how much we have. So we work hard to earn all we can. There's nothing wrong with this. This is part of the work ethic we are taught. We work hard because we want to put some food on the table. We work hard to set aside some for emergency, we work hard to give some for our church and others. These are the good reasons to be rich. But unfortunately, what money can do is not just putting food on the table. Do you know money can do almost everything theoretically? Do you know money can save you but can also destroy you? With money we can do justice and love kindness. But with the same money, we can do evil. We can do harm to others also. That is why Paul said the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith that purifies themselves with many things. I think Paul is absolutely right. If you don't have any control of money, money will control you and swell you. And that is the power of money. So money is our enemy. Money is the number one distraction from God. But it gives you a very simple logic and value. Do you know that? The more, the better. The more you have, the more you may uh, become happier, more content, more satisfied, more successful. As you know, we are living into American consumerism for a long time. We feel like we have to have a big house, a big car, or a three digit, not three digit, a six digit paycheck, <laughs> nice vacation, or whatever you can think. Is that a measurement of success? Is middle class or upper middle class is the success measure for American dream? What is American value? What is the American Christian value, by the way? The more, the better? I think something is missing here in our American Christian life. The bottom line is money cannot buy you eternal life. Am I right? 
Money can buy you the ultimate life that is really life, God given life. Sometimes, or many times, however, money gets in our spiritual journey. Number one reason that people are getting divorced is money issue. Number one reason that people are hating and fighting and killing each other is greed or economic power, which is another money issue. More, the better, the more powerful. Number one social issue is poverty, which is again about money. Why in the world are we all stuck in the money issue? Even churches and conferences are not immune to that. You know the offering budget? I heard that. Building project? That reduction fundraising? I heard that. Apportionment? It seems everything in ministry is around money again. Here's the lesson for us. If we lose our focus on the purpose of our life and the mission of the church, we will be stuck in the money issue all the time. Let me ask you, why are you here? Come on. This is your time. Why are you here? Worship. Worship God. Fellowship with other believers. Okay, fellowship with other believers. What else? Why are you here? To be fed by the word. Okay. Why are you here? Do you know the mission of the church? To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? Why do we have a beautiful center like this and dynamic preacher like uh, Pastor Richard? Why? Why do you have to give your time and energy and money to the church? If you don't figure out why you are here, ultimately, we may lose focus on God. We may believe that everything is tied into the money issue rather than God. Again, Jesus talked about money. Not because he needed money or fundraise for his ministry, but because if we cannot get away from money, we will be stuck in greed or cultural scarcity or fear and anxiety out of money. That is how money shakes up our life. And we might lose our focus on that. God's machine. So Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, 24, No one can serve two masters, for the slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Being rich is not the ultimate purpose of life, but it is just a means of living. Money that you earn every day is not your value, nor your identity, nor your status, nor your ultimate purpose of life. Instead, instead, or said, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness, so that you can fight the good fight of the faith, take hold of the eternal. Or continue to say that as those who in present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. There are to the good, to be rich in good work and generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation of the future so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. How can we fully rely on God even in the middle of the millions of challenges that money causes? So this is my second point. Don't give up on challenges. Don't turn away from them. Endure today's challenges, adapt them into new living conditions, Stay focused on the mission until you win. In other words, discipline yourself to adapt new challenges 
Stay focused and don't give up until you win. Let me repeat again. Don't give up until you win. And then you will win. Right? So let us not to change money, but rather pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, and love, and endurance, gentleness. By doing this, you will be transformed into new adaptive leader who can tackle those daily challenges. So don't give up until you. Let me explain the goals. Um, we need to pursue. First, pursue righteousness. It actually means to do justice or do no harm. Knowing what is right and do the right thing for the sake of God's kingdom. Jesus said, remember, strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then, all things, all these things will be given to you as well. If you have all things, that you will be rich, right? The strive first for the kingdom of God for, the, for His righteousness. And, and then all things will be given to you. God is about holy living. How many of you are doing daily devotion? Daily prayers? Daily Bible reading? How many hours do you spend for God all day? God only, in a day or in a week, how many hours? Think about that. Faith, the faithfulness, it really means to take a courageous step toward the unseen and uncertain future. Because faith is enabling us to face the reality that what we hope for. Because faith assures us that our life is founded upon what we don't see. Are you believing in Jesus? Are you believing in Jesus? Then you have to walk into the unknown and challenging places where Jesus was walked along with the people in need. That is faith. Love. Are you ready to give yourself to others? Are you ready to give yourself to others? Jesus said, giving yourself to others is the most the highest love of all. Love God, love your neighbors as yourself. Gentleness. The heart that embraces all things, all people, all differences. <coughs> it is a humble and gentle heart that invites us together as the own body of Christ. Welcomes us, strangers of the world. Part of God's kingdom and endures. It means to wait until God's time comes upon us. And be patient. Keep your faith in the midst of tumors and challenges. To keep fighting the good fight of the faith and to take hold of the eternal life. You have to have a steady endurance to never give up. You may fail. May fail, but you have to get up and go on a lifelong journey over and over and over again. These are not a one time thing. These require a lifelong commitment to discipling yourself and practice it over and over again so that you can fight a good fight of the faith until you take hold of the eternal. I'm going to close with the one story. Here's the story of an old wise donkey. I don't know whether you know this story or not. Donkey was old, but faithful and loyal to his owner. But unfortunately, on one day, accidentally, he fell down in a well. The donkey cried out for help, 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 help. The owner came and tried to rescue him, but he wasn't able to pull his donkey up to the ground. And then the owner had a second thought. 
great is old, the well is not in a good condition, why don't I close the well? So he asked if his neighbors to come and help closing the well, right? So he and his friend were shoveling dirt on the well, in the well. And when the dirt fell on his back, the donkey was painfully screaming, Please, save me! But all of a sudden, he changed his attitude and stayed calm and focused. And then every time, when the people shoved the dirt on his back, instead of screaming, the donkey shook it up like this and took a step out. What he did is instead of giving it up, he shakes up the dirt, takes a step out every time. He never gives up. Shake it up. Take a step up, maybe jump up, right? And then finally the donkey could out of the well. Shake it up and take a step up. So to take hold of the eternal life. Know yourself well, your strengths, your weakness, your gift and talent, your struggles. Know your God through whom everything is possible. Know your enemy that distracts you from God. And then fight the good fight of the faith. And don't give up until you win. If you are facing almost invincible challenges, then what you can do is shake them off. Right? Shake them off and take a step out. Shake them off. Maybe jump out. God will give you a second chance, or maybe third chance, maybe fourth chance. You know what? God is with you, always, even in the midst of stormy lives that you might be. Remember, God gives you a second chance. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the grace and mercy and forgiveness and love that you have given to us and shape us who we are. Help us to remember that you are always with us as we are facing challenges. Help us to know who we are, whose we are. Help us know the things that distract from you. Help us to know you are our God. Help us to be still and to remain focused. Focused on the mission and vision of our church. So that we may win. We may take hold of the eternal life. For Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.